Daily Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, I'm going to be looking at Atlas Comics Library, number one, Adventures in Detail, volume one. Okay, so here we're looking at uh, Fantagraphics' new reprint series. Um, this is Atlas Comics Library, number one. Um, Fantagraphics is going to be reprinting all these old uh, early Atlas comics, you know, before they became Marvel and, and you know, started having stuff reprinted out the wazoo of those later things. Um, and this is Atlas Comics Library number one, Adventures in the Tear, volume one. So this is the first in this series, and it's the first in this sub-series. And um, it looks like they are going to try and print the entirety of the Adventures in the Tear, I thought at first this might be uh, like a best of kind of thing, but um, let's flip through this a little bit and I'll show you what's going on. <laughs> Here's some end paper stuff. All looks good. This is a beautiful looking book. And this is comprom comprising the first eight issues of Adventures into Terror, November 1950 to February 1952. So there we go. Um, again, this all looks really great. They have the table of contents for all the issues. Um, they have the art and writer when it was known. A lot of these things they don't, uh, and so, some of them when they give a credit, even that has a, a question mark beside it, like maybe? <laughs> but that's good. And now here's this part. Um, this, the, this volume was put together and this forward is by Dr. Michael J. Vasallo, um, and he was the co-author of The Secret History of Marvel Comics, which was about not just the comics that came before they were rebranded Marvel Comics, but also the pulp magazines and all their other, other publishing ventures that they were doing. It's a really, uh, it's a really fun book. Um, I recommend it. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this part here is, it's a talks, it, of course, covers, for those of you who don't know, the Timely. Here's Timely, another, uh, you know, I like the Timely logo, the little shield logo. Um, but here we go. This is the Atlas. Um, you know, the um, the pre-code horror comics story has been done to death now, I think. But here it is one more time. You kind of have to do it uh, for the people who might be picking this up, not knowing anything about it. Um, and it's well written. It's got a lot of interesting uh, photos and, and reproductions of uh, different paraphernalia. Um, and then it gets into the comics. Now, I kind of like, I kind of would have enjoyed if there was a, a um, signature put in that was slick pages to reproduce the covers looking slick. Um, but I get that that's a, an expense thing. And if you're gonna either do all slick pages or all non-slick pages, it's better for the, the comics themselves that it not be slick paper. And I mean, this looks nice, this looks good. Um, now, I'm, uh, I'm a monster kind of guy. I wanna see monsters. I don't wanna see ghosts. I don't want ironic uh, accidents to kill somebody and you know, I don't care about the bad guy getting their just desserts. I want to see monsters. Uh, they can kill um, innocent people and evil people alike. I don't care. I just want to see monsters doing monster things. Um, and there is um, there is some of both of these in here. And so what I think of when I look through a book like this is what is the ratio of Comics I enjoy versus comics that I just kind of like, you know, eh, not going to bother rereading. Now, I just got this, so I really haven't done that balancing act yet. <laughs> uh, I like that uh, double bubble ad there. Um, so I really, uh, I really haven't gone through, but, you know, I'm going through here and, and seeing some things that... Uh, you know, don't have monsters. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, I don't know what the ratio is going to end up being. There's a giant ant. See, if it's just a ghostly 
figure like that. Yeah, see, there's a ghost that comes out and scares the guy. Wow, terrifying. Um, <laughs> I'm being an ass. Uh, so um, <laughs> this is this one's kind of a cheat because there's a big buildup, but all you see is the monster's shadows. <laughs> you don't see the monsters themselves. So uh, creeping vine. So anyway, um, so here's what I'll say about this. This looks nice and clean. I mean, there's no blurriness. Everything, all the color has been redone. And um, it looks really good. It really does. Now, compare this to like, this is one of my... This is Monster Invasion. So you can tell this is one of my favorites. Jay Dispero, uh, you know, it's collecting the comics where he drew the monsters. Um, and so it's a, it's one of um, Craig Yeo's uh, books for IDW. Um, these were, this was like, I don't know, what, how much was this? Yeah, this is, this was $25. Now it's been a while, but it was like half the price of this one. Um, the new one. So it had some slick end papers, but it, then when it gets in here, so these were um, shot from the pages. And you know I can't compare apples to oranges because this isn't the this isn't the Atlas stuff. So there's stuff where you know the bleed is wrong. You know, look at that. Now you know just the just wacky. It's the cheap paper they were printed on. Um, just the, the cheap way it, this was all done, okay? Um, some of them shoot better than others. It depended on how good a copy of the comic they were able to get hold of. But this darker look and this kind of off-kilter coloring kind of fits Monsters and Horror a little bit better in my opinion. And uh, some of these are just, there's a nice, this is, that's a great monster. Um, some of this is just uh, very, very clean and bright looking. Here, it's getting a little darker. Oh yeah, this is a funny one, This the disembodied head tormenting the guy. <laughs> Still, it basically serves the purpose of a ghost. It's not really a monster. Um, so that would be my only thing, is that in my mind, I kind of look back, this, see, this is kind of darker. I, I guess it was just, a, I guess it's just those early stories seem so bright. You know, they don't seem, it's getting darker as it goes along. That's, that's all right. Um, the thing in the water. This is a funny one, too. This little... Look at this, this guy that's really a, a little creature in disguise. And it's, it's, <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's the only thing I would say is that those early ones look kind of bright. I guess it's not as bad later on, although there's still some things might be a little bright. Um, I like the, I like this monster in the dark room. But what I really want to do is um, one thing. Is that um, Basil Wolverton, one of my favorites. Uh, here is this. You see, this looks a little bit blurry. And. Um, I was trying to compare. This is from another Fantagraphics book. Uh, the part of their two-volume thing of all the early comics work of Basil Wolverton, which if you don't have these, you should definitely have these. So here's the same book. And it, it, it is brighter, 
but I think it's dark enough, it looks good, and it's much clearer to read on some of these pages. See? So I, I kind of like these darker colors, but at the same time, it looks kind of uh, out of focus. And this, I mean, which one, I, I, you know, I trust the, the, you know, it's all those decisions either these guys are making, you know, who are putting these together as to what it should look like. And um, I, I almost think I kind of give the edge to this earlier version. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So um, do I think this is a, a there, this is a good one too. Um, do I think this is worth getting? I absolutely do. And I think you'll probably want you know, you want at least one volume of this in your collection. Uh, it's a it's a great series so far. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Um, like I said, it uh, put in the comments uh, any um, what are your favorite reproductions of this old stuff? Where where are the best reproductions coming from? I think the Dark Horse um, EC collections are also seem brighter than they should. Um, but again, that might be just me. Um, if I was going, you know, this is, uh, like I say, there's, uh, two volumes. This is the, uh, all these early works of Basil Wolverton, this first volume. And it's, it's also a great biography with lots of great, uh, oh, look at that. I love dinosaurs and I love Basil. There you go. Um, lots of great background stuff his early strip stuff, um, humor, all kinds of artwork. Uh, this has the, um, this has mostly, as far as actual comic book stuff, it has the Space Hawk and um, some of the other um, sci-fi ones he was doing at, at the time. But this also has plenty of cool monsters in it his spaceships are really crude and funny. Um, look at those. Uh, just fabulous stuff. There's some of the humor things. And his action adventure stuff. See, more, more great fauna. But, you know, if I was only going to get one of the Basil ones, I'd go for Brain Bats of Venus. Because... Um, and this covers the rest of his uh, his life there. Lots of humor. But the, the big thing for me was um, it's collected in the back here pretty much. Where is it? It starts right here. So here's some more. Here's his Space Hawk, his attempt to do a Space Hawk uh, daily. Some humor stuff, some funny faces. Some of the, but then this is where it really, this is what really gets me. This is his prime monster stuff here at the very back. Now, mind you, I wouldn't mind if they put out a, a smaller book just compiling all these monster strips together. Look at this cool monsters. This story, you know. Ugh. Nightmare World, that's a really fun one. So anyway, um, and I also, like I say, this uh, Jay Dispro, uh, even aside from the fact that the um, it's got all these problems with the color bleeding out everywhere and <laughs> some really odd choices. It's got some of the greatest monsters. There's a ghost, but I, I won't hold that against them. They're mostly monsters in here. And uh, that's a lot of fun. That's out of print. I wish they'd 
bring this, uh, I say reprint this volume, but now that I hear IDW is having all kinds of financial trouble. Well, I mean, there's there's actual whole books of this series that are devoted to ghosts. I, I don't have, own those, but uh, but this this one in particular. And again, all these, all these um, are printed in the larger format instead of trying to reproduce these the size of a regular comic, which they weren't. They were a larger size, larger trim size. So um, that's a little look at those. Like I said, um, I definitely think this is uh, worth getting. Um, the monster to other ratios looks a little thin to me. Uh, and uh, these first stories looked a little bright. They look a little bright. But then, yeah, this is good stuff. And like I said, a lot of these stories have not been reprinted to death like some of the other pre-codes. There you have it. Hope you like that one.